since you're here, can I ask you an education related question? Oh boy, go for it. Because right. uh, I'm I'm curious for for the purpose of teaching. This is this was the thing, right? All right. Well, maybe let's start more general, right? Rhetoric is the art of. Um, usually, we define rhetoric as as being spoken, right? It's yeah. the art. It's the art of speaking well, or speaking persuasively, or speaking in such a manner that one gets one's point across to the audience, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. But we also have a course. It's mostly. It's like it's really to satisfy uh, the state requirement for a, a composition course, right? But it's it's put under the title of written rhetoric, which would be okay. Like writing with, and and it's true, right? There's a difference between grammar, where you just write a well constructed sentence, and you would recognize, right? There are certain people like that write with a certain flair, right? Or that sure. there's that there might be certain styles of writing that you might call rhetorical styles of writing. Mm -hmm. But I was wondering, so like for the purposes of teaching, would it matter? Do you think if so, like the, if the course is for written rhetoric? and how to write well. Would it matter if I still had them read and study like great speeches? Or would you think that those would be two different things? And that's why I mean, so like between oral and written rhetoric, is there really a, is there a difference other than medium? Um, I don't think there would be, uh, uh, I mean, not harm isn't the right word, but it's like, I think your students would certainly still do well in a class called written rhetoric um, to read great speeches. I mean, like, like one of the main, one of the, one of the uh, things I'm, I'm trying to emphasize uh, with my teachers a lot um, with the little kids is to have them read great speeches. Uh, well, and to have them memorize them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think yeah. it's certainly, there certainly is a, a, a difference, I, uh, I think, between, you know, um, uh, between written rhetoric and, and oral rhetoric, but not, not so much that they're, I mean, yeah, not so much that they're, like, different um well they're certainly not different arts right they're still under the genus of rhetoric i would think so um, but it, it yeah and that's why like there's a part of me that might think that there's a slight different like that if i was going to try to speak to you versus if i was going to write you a letter i don't know that I've, i there might i don't know there might be different things i would do in a written medium yeah a style of construction that I might use written that maybe I wouldn't use when speaking to you. I'm not sure. Right. Yeah. But yeah. both of them, both of them exist for the sake of getting one's point across. So I would, yeah, I think I would agree. They, they both fall under the genus of, of rhetoric. I was just wondering kind of for the purpose of teaching, should I have them like read great historical letters or, cause that I mean, there will be an oral rhetoric course and they'll certainly look at speeches and they'll have to memorize speeches for that. But I'm, I was also just kind of wondering for the written rhetoric course. I was like, I, it's like, I, I don't know what I, I don't know what I would do. Or I'm just, you know, thinking. Yeah, I mean, um, you could also look at like um, prologues to some of Aquinas's works because he write though he writes those mm. slightly differently than he does in like the normal. Uh, That's an interesting idea. Question style, right? Because in the introduction or prologue, right, his his purpose is a little bit different. There, he's trying to um, to persuade, you know, in a way, um, his reader that what the you know the rest of what he's the rest of what the reader is about to read is worth reading. Um, and then once he gets into the meat of the stuff, um, mm. he can he can uh, strip away some more of the um, rhetorical flourishes for the sake of precision and for the sake of, you know, that is interesting. Um, I, uh, yeah, I don't think I want to admit too loudly, but yeah, I can't believe I didn't think of that <laughs> <laughs> for um, as much as I always tout, you know, St. Thomas and read Thomas for primary source. I was like, hey, what should the students read for red? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, but I mean, um, 
yeah you i mean i'm i'm yeah it, it would be i mean i think speeches are kind of the yeah are kind of the way to go they're sort of the besides like prologues to the of saint thomas speeches are the first thing that i think of um yeah, well, yeah, when you do think rhetoric, that is, and I think that kind of should be the first thing you think, rhetoric really is primarily speech. But there is an art of writing with a flair, right, or writing rhetorically. But, uh, yeah, so you're, it's, and they wouldn't seem is... to employ the same tools, but maybe they would, like, like something like, a, like alliteration, you could use just as well in writing as you could in, in speech. Yeah, the uh, only I think the only thing that oral um, rhetoric adds is like the the matter of delivery. That's something. I yeah, think you can't that, put that inflection you, or pace in in writing. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and so you have to make up for it um, with you know a certain I don't know mm -hmm. with a certain style and with certain word choice and things like that. Yeah, uh, that is something I might. I would. Yeah, I'll have to look look into that and looking at even yeah Thomas's own distinctions of his different writing styles for his different the different works that he does. Mm -hmm. uh, and then yeah, looking at some speech too. I wonder if I could get a hold of. Uh, I don't know that common copies exist of like Tolkien's letters. I wonder if that would be interesting because I guess if anybody could write a good letter, he would. Uh, mm. I know the letters are available, but like, like at the estate and stuff for people to study, but I don't know that they've been like generally published. I don't know. I wonder if I could look that up. Yeah. Letters of. Yeah. It's, it's sort of, it's sort of odd because, um, I mean, hmm. written rhetoric isn't really, I, re I think like rhetoric, I think, um, is found more commonly in in oral form rather than written form yeah you know? i think that that's and like uh, and i think that that's right i was just yeah. given that given that i'm having to deal with a written rhetoric course yeah and, hmm. do you think hmm, i'm thinking i'm wondering maybe if there's like If there are maybe like letters from, I don't know, like, like I'm thinking letters, letters from like monarchs to their people, um, like before there was the microphone and stuff. Mm. Um, if because because the because rhetoric is the art of because um, like right because grammar grammar logic and rhetoric all uh, are all arts that are ordered to speech, mm -hmm. right? Um, but by the time you get to rhetoric, um, you're now taking the uh, you're now taking the art of constructing an argument, um, but insofar as it's ordered to action. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, if I don't know if there was some like monarch or something that was trying to, again before the use of a microphone. Mm -hmm um that was trying to like persuade his people to do a certain something or not do a certain something yeah um well i don't know would have people be would general people be able to read or would it be written for the announcer guy to oh. scroll and read out the i don't know but that's an interesting it's an interesting point yeah i don't know but there is a paperback of Tolkien's letters. Yeah. That I saw. Uh, certainly this, uh, like Thomas, since we were talking about Tom, like Thomas's De Regno is certainly an excellent example of written rhetoric, right? He's writing to the King of Cyprus with a guide to action rather than like pure political speculation, right? He's trying to show this guy how to be a good prince. That might be something. Yeah. But I think to your point, there's got to be something like that. There has to be led either from monarchs to each other or like, um, 
Yeah, some sort of written, you know, written communication. Uh, yeah. Maybe was not it... very old, but. Yeah, I mean, I think I really it's it's interesting now that I that I'm thinking about this, that it, it really seems like the art of rhetoric is meant more as like an oratory uh, kind of art rather than a written one. Yeah, it does seem to be more its often than not. Anyway, it, it does know. seem to be its primary end is oral. Yeah, I mean, do you was I mean was so was uh is this a class like you're being required to uh to make or like it's to it functions as the lead up to so this is it's readings in written rhetoric this was given to me. But it okay. leads up to the class next semester, which is the actual composition course. Okay. Like, so they would have to write papers, and that's just like all they'd be doing, right? Uh, and I imagine there are as many different types of writing as there would be of speech. It's persuasive, informative, probably mostly persuasive, but uh, you know, exhortatory. Um, but yeah. But yeah, I, I, I would definitely agree that the main end of rhetoric is for the purpose of, of to be spoken rather than written. Yeah. But I think I still do see, again, there's that difference just between like being able to construct a grammatically correct sentence and really being able to, to like, you know, it's the difference between reading Tolkien and reading J.K. Rowling, right? Like that's like just one of them is a much better writer mm. than the other one. Mm. That there, there, there are differences in style of of writing that yeah. would seem to be influential to again like the point you're trying to get across like in in my writing to you what is what is the purpose uh, yeah yeah but maybe because of like what you're saying maybe precisely because rhetoric is meant more to be spoken like like when i, I tried to find like books anything about collection written rhetoric there's just not a lot out there and that might be why yeah yeah, I think I think what uh, it sounds like it sounds like what these two classes are are just supposed to be is um, the written course is them like reading great speeches and reading good rhetoric, whether they were meant only to be written or or meant to be spoken as well, mm -hmm. and then um, learning from those works and then implementing what they've learned in the next class. That's what it sounds like to me as well. Yeah. These are, right. Yeah. Cause I, it's, it's, I do think it, it makes, um, like insofar as rhetoric is meant to, um, uh, provoke action. Um, yeah, I do think it's interesting that like, um, speaking something is more, or it, it seems like it's more, provocative of action than just uh than just it written down right that's yeah um, i would say that's true you can sort of yeah and i suppose it's because of the delivery as i was speaking of before you know that it would sort of you can you can add more flourish on top of the flourish that you have written down mm -hmm. as you read it um, yeah like people people would always say that like Obama was a great speaker that he was like the best <laughs> ever at speaking. That's right. This just yeah, and, this great orator. Right. And they would always use this as a way to bash Bush as well, because you know, he would always like screw up whenever he would talk and stuff. He sounded uh, like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, um but um but there was nothing like like particularly profound that Obama would say, I don't think. Um, and really, you know, I think what they were, what they're referring yeah. to is like the way that he speaks. Um, yeah. Well, that's what, the that's what that he delivers his speech. That Which was Socrates' like, whole know, thing about the sophists. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That was yeah. that. He's like, they're, if you listen to what they're it sounds great, but they're not saying anything that's substantive. Right. Yeah. When you get yeah. to Aristotle or when you get to somebody like Augustine, who was a teacher of rhetoric, that was his whole point was, you're trying to persuade people, but to act on what's true and what's right. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's to deliver well, what is also true and good. You know, yeah. it's not, it's not to just dress up 
empty speech. Although certainly, yeah, a lot of people use it like that. Yeah. And I think, I don't know, in, in the common connotation, like I think if you went out to the street corner and talked to somebody about rhetoric, I think that's exactly what they would think. Yeah. It's just, it's just the manner of speaking where you're, you're trying to like spin your point or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this, this kind of, uh, reminds me of, of a thought that I've, I haven't thought about in a long time, which is like, um, which is the, which is the more, um, like perfect representative of a language it's written form or it's spoken form hmm. uh, um is there even a more like is one even more perfective of the other perfective than the other um um and i'm really not sure i've gone back and forth because in in its written form you can uh you know all all else all things considered right you can you can um ensure it's like grammatical accuracy a lot more than you can when it's spoken um and yet it seems like like uh, uh and yet like uh, spoken language it seems is is prior um in like the first sense of prior i think um to written language you know and uh in the way that one is prior to two. Okay. Yeah. And intelligibility or in the order of sequence being. Yeah. yeah I think so. Yeah. Um, I it certainly is the case chronologically. Yeah. But, uh, in the spoke, well, yeah. It seems to be by nature too. Like, I mean, you, you vocalize long before, I mean, you first, you vocalize even before you say anything that makes sense. And then you can speak long before I think most people are capable, even like capable of writing. Yeah. And it, yeah, and it just, uh, it does seem, doesn't Aristotle go that way in the order in on interpretation that words are the signs of what's in our mind and then written words are the signs of the spoken. Yeah word right he seems to take that order also yeah so that would that would suggest that spoken language is more perfect than written i think right what do you mean here by perfect though yeah yeah like the <laughs> yeah yeah i think that's if you mean like the yeah. most yeah like the best representation of the language then i that's probably accurate the way that it's used right because that's that's what words and language is is for is for speech right for the communication of knowledge and writing kind of seems to be secondary on that if speech is for the communication of knowledge writing would be for its preservation right which comes after yeah not solely so though right Mm. no not <clears throat> excuse me yeah not like solely or only but yeah yeah i guess if we're just going by the nature of speech itself what i would i i suppose what i would have to mean by more perfect is which one is better at doing what speech is supposed to do I want you to guess is what you were saying. Right? Yeah. Uh, namely, the communication of forms from one mind to another. Um, and intelligible forms, too. They have to be intelligible forms. Um, yeah, I think if it's going to be considered speech, it has to be intelligible. Or of something intelligible, right? When babies gargle, right? We don't call that speech. It's vocalizing, but. Yeah. It's not speech. Right? We only say that they started speaking when 
they recognized mama, mm -hmm. dad, dad, right? And mm -hmm. that speech. <laughs>